okay recording good evening corona Day development group it is me Jeanette edwards i'm here this evening with daniel ford this is our third day in awakening the entrepreneur in you uh daniel ford is the uh chief learning strategist officer uh, of the joseph consulting firm llc she began her career working in a public school district with the help of the American Federation of Teachers, she was able to grow her skill set in professional development facilitation. She now works hard to design, I mean, she's now works to design training content and coursework for small business owners, both new and established. In addition to uh, being the chief learning strategist officer at the Joseph Consulting Firm, Danielle is also the CEO and owner of Geek Planning and Development LLC. This evening, she will be talking with us about go for the goal, the final day in this three day entrepreneurial series. And I am going to immediately turn it over to her. She's going to start. All right. I'm going to mute myself, but I'm here. Okay, Danielle. Okay. Hello, hello, and good evening, everyone. I'm saying hello to you guys all the way from Texas, Houston, Texas, that is. So, yes, thank you so much for that introduction, um, Net. Again, my name is Danielle Ford. I am the CEO and owner of Geek Planning and Development, LLC. I am also the Chief Learning Strategist for the Joseph Consulting Firm. So today I'm going to be talking to you about going for your goals. And I don't know about you, but I work also in corporate America. And believe it or not, I actually love my job. I actually love what I do. And because of the job that I have and loving what I do and being able to constantly grow and learn um, new skills, um, I wanted to take that experience and be able to help um, others um, grow and develop on their own too, whether they are still wanting to remain in corporate America or if they, wanting, they are wanting to step away and venture out to establish and grow their own business. So in order for you to get to that point, um, you do have to set a goal. Goals are key in order for you to reach in the final destination of where you are going. Um, you can't just wake up one day. Well, you can. You can wake up one day and just say, hey, you know what? I think I want to start a business. Let me go out and start a business. It's more to it than just saying, let me go out and start a business. We actually have to have something that we're going to work towards. So the definition of a goal is, it's your ambition. It's the ambition that you have to try to reach your desired result. So if we are talking about becoming an entrepreneur, owning our own business, we have to work and that's going to be our drive, our motivating factor in order to establish that business. Um, developing our goals is very important to awakening the entrepreneur in you. Um, you do have to be strategic in the type of goals that you set. And also understand that you can take as much time as you need in order to accomplish the, these goals. Move at a pace that is comfortable for you. Also, you want to make sure when you are developing the goals, um, you want to be strategic as well as intentional. You want to make sure that the goals that you are choosing to set for yourself are goals that you know that you can realistically meet. And we'll talk more about that here in just a few moments. Go ahead to the next slide for me, please. You can go to the next one. I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. <laughs> you can go to the next one. Okay. So whenever we're talking about setting goals, we want to, typically we start with um, the beginning. What do I have to do to get started? That's where our mindset normally defaults to. But when setting goals, I actually like to work backwards. I like to put out there the where I want the end result to be, and I work backwards from that point. There are a lot of things that you must take into consideration when you are setting a goal. And in order for you to do so, simply writing this information down on a piece of paper or sticky note or chalkboard or dry erase board is not going to be enough. You are definitely going to have to brainstorm. You are definitely going to have to put some serious thought and consideration into the goals that you are going to set. Whenever you're establishing a business, there are a lot of moving pieces, 
um, that are a part of that end result. And so um, setting goals is going to help you to get to that end result. If, can you move to the next slide for me, please? With any goals that you set, you wanna be direct, you wanna be intentional. Um, starting a business, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of time, um, especially if you are currently working a nine to five job or you have a boss. So if you have a boss, but you wanna step out and be your own boss, those are things that you have to take in consideration. How much time are you going to be able to commit to establishing and growing your business? Are you going to need to walk away from your secular position? Um, how much money are you going to need to start up your business? Do you have um, people that owe you favors or do you have a, a network of individuals whom you can call on that are able to help you um, reach that goal of a starting your business? Do you have individuals that you can um, hire on? Are you going to need employees? Are you going to be working this business by yourself for a while or will you have a small staff or a team ready to get you set up and going? So can we move to the next slide, please? Okay. So when setting goals, on top of being direct, on top of being intentional and strategic, you have to give yourself a due date. The reason why you want to give yourself a due date is because if you simply just put a goal down or write something on a piece of paper and you don't give yourself an actual time to have it completed, complete it, where it's going to be your accountability. You can simply just look at that piece of paper sometime down the road and said, oh yeah, I was supposed to have started a business already, but I didn't really give myself a time of when I wanted to have it done or when I wanted to actually launch that business. Instead, you just have the words on the paper. So when you're talking about a due date, you have to also take into consideration what you currently have going on within your own personal life. Can we go to the next slide? I am a firm believer in balance. Um, I have been working on my business idea for the last four years. And in me working um, with my business, one of the things that I wanted to take into consideration when growing or starting my business is that I know that I have a, a full-time job working 40 or more hours per week. I also know that I have a family. I am a mom. I have children. I'm an aunt. I have a pet. And pets are just as, need just as much support as human children. Um, I also you know, have spiritual responsibilities. My health is also very important as well as the health of my children. And then self-care. A lot of times when you talk to individuals about being entrepreneurs and starting their own business, you hear the term hustle, hustle hard, don't stop. Sometimes you'll hear a person say, I'll sleep when I'm dead. And so when I think about those things and when I hear people talk about, I'm gonna sleep when I'm dead, do you know that the average lifespan of a person, according to an article that I found on CNN, this was written back in uh, 2016 or 2018, if I'm not mistaken, I can't remember the exact date, but there was an article in CN, um, written um, by CNN and um, the author stated that in 2016, the average lifespan of a human, of an individual living in the United States of America was 79.8 years. 79.8 years. So when I put that in perspective, if all I had was my corporate job, I have to work until I am retired and retirement age is 65. So 79.8 years to 65 I'm looking at about what, 14, maybe 15 years of my life left before I possibly may have to be buried by my children. I don't want to work and put that kind of stress and anguish on myself mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually to only have 15 years to enjoy the fruits of all of my labor. We spend so much time with education, certifications, 
um, moving up in different organizations, and of course, establishing our own businesses. And then I think about 65, I want to enjoy stuff before I'm 65. I want to enjoy stuff now while I'm still in my 30s. I want to be able to experience things while I'm when I get to my 40s, but I don't want my life to come to a complete standstill when I turn 65 and I'm old enough to actually retire and I only have maybe 10 or 15 years to really enjoy all of the hard work that I've done. So in that, with that concept in mind, I have worked tirelessly to set my goals and include my corporate job, include my family, include taking out time for my spiritual health, including making sure that I am taking care of my medical needs and also making sure that I am taking care of myself. Because if, my, if I am empty and if I'm worn out and, and drained, I'm not going to be able to pour into someone else. I'm not going to be able to help advise or coach or mentor the next person because I have completely um, exhausted all of my being. When I set my goals, I set my goals to work around the fact that I do have a family. I set my goals to work around the fact that I do have a corporate job and I am still going to make sure that I go to bed at a certain time so that way I can be well and able to function. I also make sure that when I set my goals, I put myself on my calendar. I put myself in my planner. So on Saturdays at 12 o'clock noon, it does not matter what anyone else has going on, but at 12 o'clock noon, from 12 noon to 2 p.m., that is time just for me to do what I want just for me. If I have a client that needs to have a consult or if I'm working on a project, I will still work my project. I will still handle my other obligation. But from 12 p.m. to noon on, I'm sorry, from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturday, it is my time. I will stop whatever I am doing to do what I want for two hours and not worry about anybody else. What got me to this point? From the time that I was 16 years old, when I first started working, I worked. I worked. I went to school, I had a child, I worked, I worked, I didn't take days off unless I had to go to a doctor's appointment. But even when I went to a doctor's appointment or I had to take my child to school or anything like that, I would do what I had to do and I would come back to work. I would hardly get any rest. I got severely sick last year to the point that I ended up in the hospital for an entire week. I almost lost my life. And it was, that was the first time since I was 16 years old that I actually listened to my body and I slept. I let the doctors do whatever they wanted to do to me, poke me, take blood, whatever. I didn't fight. I did not complain. I slept. I slept and I prayed that if I could come out of this, that the next time I set my mind to doing something, I'm gonna make sure that I take care of myself first. And that's why I am here to be able to speak to you today. So Ned, if we can move to the next slide, we're gonna talk about how you need to actually write a goal. So when we are talking about actually writing a goal, again, you may think, let me just find a piece of paper and make a list. It's not necessarily a list that you need to make. When you are first getting started, <laughs> I actually like this term that my um, stepdaughter says. She says, mom, I am going to get my planner so that I can plan what I need to plan for the rest of the week. And I said, what do you mean? She's going to take her planner, open it up, to a section where she can just write freely 
and brainstorm what she wants to get accomplished in that week and then go and put it on her planner. So when we are talking about writing a goal, of course, when you first get started, it's like a brainstorming session. It's free thinking. Can we go to the next slide? So grab something to write on. Even now, while you are here with me and you're taking in these little nuggets, and I'm pretty sure that your mind is racing, even though it's a Friday evening, we are thinking about starting a business. We are thinking about setting goals and coming up with actionable plans to reach and achieve the desired goal. Once you have something to write on, next slide, we want to have something to write with. And when I tell you guys, I use everything. I have special pens. I have markers. I have dry erase board, I have my iPad, I have um, the big post-it notes that you can buy from the Office Depot or Office Mac and you can stick them on the wall. And when I move, I promise when I move into my new house, I am going to invest in whiteboard or dry erase paint. I am going to put dry erase paint on my office wall so I can just write all over the wall and see everything that I want to get done in big, colorful letters the way I want it done. So get something to write with. Next slide. So when you are thinking about your goals, and the thing about it is you can have as many goals as you want, as many goals as you want. And when you sit down to determine the goals that you have and what it is that you want to reach. Um, my biggest thing has always been look at what you want to accomplish and what is something that you want to focus on right now. What is something that you are determined to have finished? And that is the goal that we are going to start with first. And as you make, as you progress and move towards reaching that goal, then you can slowly add in other things that you would like to also accomplish. But remember, we still have to consider our family. Um, if we have spouses, if we are caregivers to ailing or elderly parents or family members that may be sick, if we have children, everyone is doing virtual learning. So we have to take all of this into consideration when determining what goals we are going to focus on. So we're going to brainstorm. When we brainstorm, we're gonna think about, go to my next slide, please. Can you move to the next slide? When we brainstorm, and since we are talking about starting a business, some of the things that we think about when we're wanting to start our own business is, well, what am I gonna name the business? What am I gonna name it? Am I offering a product or am I selling a service or, and, or I'm not selling a service, but am I providing a service? Am I building something? Am I installing something? Um, am I going to, do I need to have any type of formal education? Do I need to um, go online or reach out to somebody and learn some additional skills? Do I need to get any type of certifications? Do I have to state, take any type of state boards or any type of um, formal testing in order to be able to sell a product or provide a specific type of service? What type of supplies am I going to need to have in order to jumpstart my business? Or even with just even in the planning phases of your business, starting your business, you don't just go right into it. There's planning that has to be done even within the goal, bigger goal itself. You still have to plan in order to accomplish some of these things. So if you're going to need supplies, what type of supplies are you going to need? When are you going to need those supplies in order for you to get started or to be able to move forward? Do you have to have heavy equipment or what type of equipment are you going to need? Um, also in starting your business, it's gonna require research. So when are you going to set aside time to focus specifically on researching? understanding your market, understanding who your competitors are. Is there someone else that's offering a service similar or product similar to yours? What is going to make yours stand out compared to the next person? 
Is it a deterring factor? It can be when you're getting started, it can be overwhelming, but that's where the next point comes in. We need to have supporters. And so when we talk about having supporters, I'm not talking about just your you know, immediate family members. I'm talking about people who you have a connection with that sees your goal and your vision even more further ahead than even you see it yourself. Your cheerleaders, the ones that are going to push you and hold you accountable because they want to see you succeed and they want to see your vision become your reality. So all of those things are important. And even when you're talking about supporters, think about who it is that you're going to lean on. Okay. Whenever you're working to start a business, you're going to need to find people who can mentor you. Those who have been in it or who have done it before you and can offer you some insight. So maybe you don't have to make some of the same mistakes that they made. They're able to kind of help give you a little nugget here or there. So that way you're able to learn from mistakes that have already been made and you are able to proceed without having some additional challenges. Also think about if you're going to need to hire out employees or staff, or if you can even look at offering internships to college students. Um, if you can also um, reach out to freelancers who are in your area or in other places that can help in establish the establishment or growth of your business. All of these things are very important. And this little list that I have right here it's not even the end of it. This is just a sample of some of the things that you have to take into consideration and plan for when you are establishing your business. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you very much. Goals are the key to everything you want in life. Any decision that you make no matter how big or how small you may feel that decision is, you don't make the decision lightly. If it's one thing that I have learned in the four years that I have been working um, to be strategic, be intentional, be realistic about the goals that I set for myself is I have to plan. Um, I have to hold myself accountable. And I have to have a support system of individuals who understand my vision and where I want to go and what I'm trying to accomplish and who can help me stay grounded in that aspect. But any decision that you make, whether it's purchasing a home, whether it is starting a business, whether it is saving up money to send a kid to college, you have to plan and you have to give yourself time. Now, is it I have to put my phone on silent. I so apologize for that. Um, so in that, are you are there going to be instances where you're going to feel discouraged? You may feel overwhelmed, you may feel like, what have I gotten myself into? Is this really something that I really want to do? All of those things that I just pointed out are the exact same conversations and thoughts that I had in my head. Um, like I said, that small amount of time that I spent in the hospital by myself and I was away from my kids. I was not nowhere near home. I was in another state working when all of this happens to me. And so from that point, I knew that I had to be more cautious and be more specific about what I did and how I invested my time because I wanna make sure that I am here 20 years from now. I want to live past 79.8 years so that I can enjoy the fruits of my labor and all of my hard work. So that is all that I have to share with you guys this evening. I want to thank you for allowing me this opportunity to share some of my little tidbits and nuggets. 
I am here if you have any questions or if you have any comments to make. I am open to those. And I do hope that I get to see you and talk to you again very soon. Hello. Hi. Okay, let me get myself back on the screen. Uh, sorry. Uh, of course, I don't know why I'm not seeing myself. <laughs> I see you. I, I, okay, they, then you're just going to be on the screen because I don't see me. Uh, so I think they can only see you, which is okay. fine. <laughs> uh, I am looking in the chat for some for some questions. We're still streaming. Uh, as I'm looking, though, I'm going to ask you my question, okay? Uh, so that while you're answering those, I can, um, I'll be looking for mine. So let me just see if I can make this a little smaller. Okay, perfect. Um, and thank you, Danielle. Thank you uh, for doing this with us on a Friday evening. I know Fridays are, that's usually my down day. I, I, under, I understand like completely. Normally, um, shoot, normally I don't do anything on Fridays either. I get off from work and I'm, I'm going to take a nap. That, that's what yeah, I normally uh, is that the day? Yeah, that's what I <laughs> that's uh -huh. what I normally do on Friday, but um, I wanted to um, definitely do this and it's at a time that was convenient for me. So it really was not much work that had to be done to do this. So it's not it was not a problem at all. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> uh, Corona Days Professional Development Group's mission is to increase marginalized groups access to employment opportunities and representation in the workforce by providing our members with free training, mentorship, and other resources. CDPD was created in response to record unemployment and underemployment rates stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020. Can you share with us um, if you've ever been marginalized and if so, how? Ugh. Me personally, I can only think of maybe one instance where I may have been marginalized. Um, I will say that I can truly relate to a lot of what we are seeing happening in our country today, but I am one of those who have never felt some of the pain that I am seeing others experience, I will say that. So um, my one experience that I can remember, I was, I wanna say I was either a freshman or a sophomore in college. And at the time I was working for a company who um, ended up shutting down. It was a company that was here in Houston. They ended up shutting down and I got laid off. And because I was one of the youngest employees they said, oh, you can go, you know, find you another job. It'll be easy for you to bounce back, you know. And I've never worked for fast food or retail or anything like that. My very first job, I was an office manager for a CPA. I was doing this at 16 years old. So I understood how to do uh, shift reports. And we were, I was dealing with tax information for oil and gas companies such as Shell, oil, um, Shell, Chevron, Citgo, you know, all of those different types of oil and gas companies. And it was so funny because now that I'm thinking about it, even back then, I didn't even realize the type of impact I could have had if I would have pursued going into like Shell and, but I didn't like numbers. I didn't like numbers. My, my um, my um my boss he 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 loved numbers and he can you know calculate in his head I, I wasn't no that wasn't my my thing but I, I was very organized and detail oriented so it helped it helped a lot so needless to say when I started college and after I got laid off not from him not from him but from another job that I was um that where I was employed naturally I'm going to go look for something in a professional setting because that's all that I knew. So to make the long story short, um, I went through a temp, a temp agency and went to a, a hotel, a major hotel here in the city of Houston. 
And I got really excited because I was like, huh, I never would have thought about hospitality. And I didn't even work the front desk. I wouldn't have seen any customers. You want to know where they put me? Mm. They put me in the sales department. Mm, okay. So I got to work behind the scenes in like this really cool office, you know, and, you know, different things like that. So it was really, 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 really nice. Um, but I will say that I was the only person that looked like me in this office. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm young. I didn't think anything of it. You know, I was just excited that I wasn't even 20 years old and I got to go work <laughs> in the sales office of this major um, um, hotel chain. And, mm -hmm. and it was attempt to hire position. So they were okay. looking for somebody that they could, you know, have, you know, full time. So I'm there and I'm following instructions. They're showing me different things and I'm working and I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. And all of a sudden my cell phone starts going off and I don't understand why is my cell phone going off. My cell phone starts going off and it's the temp agency. So they start texting me. I'm not going to answer the phone. I'm supposed to be working. So they start texting me and say, you need to grab your things and exit the building immediately. And so I'm like, huh? You know, so I uh, asked the person that I reported to if I could just, you know, step out into the hallway. I needed to make a, a call. So I stepped into the hallway to call the temp agency back. Someone from the office called the temp agency and told them that I came to work dressed with hardly no clothes on. Mm. They said that my cleavage was out and that my underwear was showing. So mm. mind you, I think I was like 19 at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stand up just a little bit so you can see me, okay? Mm. Right now I'm 186 pounds. Okay. At the time that this took place, I was above 15, 115 pounds, super mm -hmm. skinny. Mm -hmm. I had nothing on top, nothing on top. I had to take a selfie of myself and send it to this, the uh, temp agency so that they could see what I had on. But that wasn't even enough. I had to leave there and drive to the temp agency so they could physically see the clothes that I had on they made me sit down to see if my underwear showed in the back of my pants when I sat down. They made me walk in front of them to prove that I was dressed in a professional way. The temp agency did this to me off of something that their client said or somebody who represented the client said. And it was the most humiliating experience I had ever had in my life because there was absolutely I was completely covered up completely covered up the shirt that I had actually I actually had a collar that I had on I'll never forget it was a cute little outfit I went and bought this outfit specifically for this job because I wanted them to keep me mm -hmm. and I did not go back mm -hmm. I did not go back and I left the temp agency as yeah, well. That's gonna be my question if you still work with that agency. Wow. I left the temp, I left the temp agency um, as well because I felt like I, I took it as because I'm not the I'm a client too. I may not be the one that's paying you, but I am still your client. I am still representing your brand. You didn't take up for me. My track record or my work history and my work experience meant absolutely nothing. They took the word of somebody that was, that didn't, that looked nothing like me, knew nothing about me. Maybe they wanted the position, I don't know. I will never know what was the motive behind the lie to begin with, but because it did not matter. They looked at my age, she'll bounce back from it, she can go and work anywhere. They looked at what I look like and their decision was already made. I really was just, they were just, I just sat there long enough for them to get somebody to get me out of that building. On paper, my name does not look 
like me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry. Gosh, that, that was I'm not. Good. I'm not. I wish they could see me now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, um, Danielle, what time do you start your day? Do you have a daily scheduled bedtime that you stick to? Um, I'm trying to be in bed by 11. Monday through Monday through Thursday, I'm in bed no later than 11. Um, lately, I have been able to get to bed and close my eyes between 10 and 10.30. So I've been super proud of myself. Um, <laughs> and I also, like I said, I do have a corporate job. I love my corporate job. I actually work for one of the largest health insurance companies in the country. And I am one of their senior operational mm-hmm. trainers. So in this role, I do exactly the exactly what I want to strive and help other businesses do as well is um, focus on creating business processes and um, training content and professional development for their businesses. Um, one of the biggest things that you hear um, people say about small business owners is customer service. They mean better customer service. Why is customer service such a hard thing, you know, to get? or decent customer service when you are patronizing, you know, a small business. So um, I'm taking all of that experience and I have and still am creating customer service training that will be able to help small business owners. Yes. So I also can train their staff on how to train. Mm -hmm. Um, I train the owners how to train. It's a process, you know, just because a person has knowledge doesn't necessarily mean that they can um regurgitate it and present it to someone where they can learn from it yeah so it's a skill it's a skill Mm -hmm. that has to be developed it's a skill that has to be taught i've been doing this for 13 years i've been doing this for 13 years and so now i just um i'm big on helping other people there is not a dishonest bone in my body if Mm -hmm. i say that i'm going to help you i'm going to help you but I'm also going to make sure that I take care of myself and my family first. I hear Most you. definitely. Yeah. Self-preservation is key. Um, how long did it take you to really shape your structure successfully? Four, about four and a half, five years. Mm-hmm. It, it really did. I had a wonderful mentor. Um, she didn't even know she was my mentor. Um, I made her my mentor. Um, And how she became my mentor was because she trained me. She trained me on a system at work. And I loved how she facilitated the information. It's hard being a facilitator and having to go into someone else's training and sit there because it's, it's difficult when you do it and have to go and listen to somebody else. It can be very difficult because sometimes people have no personality. And sometimes it can be very monotone. And sometimes you don't feel like you can truly relate to the person. So it can be kind of difficult at times, but she made it so fun. And the, when the training had ended, because I think the training lasted over a course of uh, several days or a couple of weeks, I remember sending her an email and saying, I'm going to be working with you soon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she was like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, never saw my face. I never saw her face. But we would email each other back and forth, you know, I would check on her, I would just tell her, hey, this is what I'm working on right now. And as soon as the opportunity came for me to go and work in that department as a trainer, and I found out that we were in the same building, and we were working in this with the same business segment, the first thing I did was tell people where is her desk, I have to find this person. And so when I went and I found her desk, I called her name and she looked at me. She didn't know who I was. You know, she probably had this look of like shock, fear, and who are you all at the same time. And I said, it's Danielle. It's Danielle. And I was like, you taught me this system. And she goes, oh, hey, hey, Danielle. You know, and I gave her like this huge, 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 huge hug. And I said, I told you I was going to be here. You may not have believed me, but I am here. And she introduced me to goal setting. She introduced me to actually making a good use of a planner. It's a planner is more than just a notebook with paper and dates. I actually take that 
and I'm strategic in how I go in and I set my goals and I plan my days, my weeks, my months, my quarters, my years. And I've been able to become so fluid in it that now my children, my girls um, actually come. And on Sundays is our planning days. On Sundays, we sit down and we actually talk with our planners and our markers and stickers and different things like that. And we talk about what we need to get done for that week whether it's school, whether it's some extracurricular activities, whether it's social, we talk about that. And then they say, mom, do you have any clients you have to meet this week? Are you going to be leaving us at all this week to go take care of somebody? We need to plan that too. So it's, it's, that's the, our process. But yes, I've been working on this now for a very long time. It says I'm live on Facebook. Did the Zoom end? Uh oh. Am I looking at, I'm looking at myself. So I guess this is over. I don't know what happened to that. Oh, I wonder if there's any other questions. Okay, so now I have my phone, I'm trying to see. Okay, I'm going to end.